Hello chess friends and welcome to Zaros Chess Channel and welcome to my basics in chess series. So in this series we see opening principles, middle game strategies and the end game strategies. Today we are continuing with these opening principles and today we talk about the so-called locked bishop situations. The locked bishop situation is similar to the bad bishop situation but I don't want to mix the th two things up because here I set you up a position, uh, it's the so-called bad bishop position. It means that this bishop is a little bit blocked out by these two central pawns so the activity of this bishop is not good but this bishop can still play, uh, still make maybe go into the game through the square h3 and maybe to d7 or e6 so it means that this bishop is not locked uh, but the activity of this bishop is really not good black has a better position here i don't want to say it's completely winning but it's a really better position here for black because uh, you cannot play actively with this bishop you see all of these pawns are on like square so it means uh, in order to defend this pawn so you have to use your bishop maybe to f1 so this bishop as i said is not locked but it's a bad one and uh, you see now in, in a couple examples this very very important locked bishop situation so uh, first of all uh, when you play uh, chess, you want to de um, develop your bishops on, of course, on the most active square. So this is one of my own games, and my bishop, uh, my opponent plays the bishop here on a very, very active square here on c4. And okay, uh, I had that battle against this bishop, uh, but you see this bishop, which was the most active piece in white's position. Well, it became a problem for my opponent and uh, in the continuation of the game after castling, my opponent played here the move e5. He wants to stay with this bishop on this diagonal and I played the move uh, d5. Here we have uh, knight on, uh, bishop on b3 and uh, I immediately used this moment and played knight on knight on a5. I want to take this bishop because it has really, really huge activity, but I, I don't want uh, to give up my knight immediately for the bishop. I want at least wait some potential a3 or a4 moves, or maybe in some occasions some c3 or c4 moves in order uh, to doubling double up pawns here and create create a really weak pawn structure on the queen side here my opponent tried queen, uh, king, uh, queen on e1 here i tried a6 now we have a4 and now bishop on d, uh, d7 with the preparation to play the move b5 here uh, bishop on a2 was played my opponent is trying to stay with this bishop on this very active diagonal and now try b5 we have uh, b3 and you see now i forced really this locked position uh, of the bishop so now of course i played here immediately b4 uh, now the bishop is really paralyzed here um, here we have knight on e2 and now you see i tried here the move uh, d4 and uh, that's what i meant uh, it's not that i uh, can really uh, grab this bishop or, or take it it's now important to see that this bishop is really locked out because it's hard for for white to push the c pawn in order to get uh, some free squares for this bishop maybe here through c2 then after that maybe through d1 so you see basically uh, i'm continuing the game with one piece up because my opponent has uh, locked out uh, his own bishop the activity of this bishop is really restricted and in this early stage of the game i had a really really completely winning middle game so here knight on uh, g3 was played bishop on c6 here we have knight on, on uh, knight on e4 and i didn't want to uh, the allow my opponent to jump on with this knight on this very weak, a uh, very uh, important d6 square, so that's why I immediately took it out. We have uh, uh, d takes e4, and now I tried f5. We have knight on knight on g5, of course, queen on d7, protecting this e7. Now we have uh, queen on uh, h4, and now h6, queen on uh, knight on h3, and now I simply took again. You see, uh, it's really hard for my opponent to push this c pawn uh, basically this bishop is really out of game and you should be uh, you should be really really realizing this potential 
um, locked positions of the bishop so when you can do that i guarantee you you will win the game immediately so you see my opponent is basically playing the middle game with one piece down although it, the piece is still on the board but why is that so uh, you see the bishop is of course one of the best pieces on the board if you have good diagonals for the bishop if you have some good activity with the bishop you can play very very good with your bishop but uh, be familiar with the situation sometimes you can block uh, your opponent's bishops with your own pawns or force your opponent to block it out by its own pawn so you see as i said here we have the so-called bad b uh, bad bishop position here we have this locked position of the bishop so of course here it's really too mm, easy to continue in this middle game because i have now two central pawns i have knight on f5 possibilities maybe improve the position of this uh, knight on c6 or try maybe some other improvements of the position because i don't feel threatened at all here by by white so let's see now uh, some instructive chess games uh, here it's a game played by uh, gil popilski against uh, hrant uh, melkomian <coughs> here grand popilski uh, tried the move after c uh, c5 he tried the move knight on uh, knight on e2 and this was the mistake we are still in an early stage of the game we're still sort of in in sort of opening or middle game stage and uh, here black uses this moment immediately because he realized that that he can play it, play on this locked pos uh, bishop position so he took of course immediately knight on e2 we have rook takes on e2 bishop takes on c3 we have uh, b takes c3 and now of course the move c4 you see this bishop on a2 is never going to get out uh, now we have the situation in which we are blocking our opponent's uh, position with our own pawns and here uh, if e5 was played and now simple bishop on c8 now you see we can use this bishop uh, in the development in the attack this bishop is really uh, locked out and uh, you see it's really easy i mentioned again uh, it's really easy to continue in these types of games because we're basically playing with one piece up so let's see now another game it was played by anthony miles against uh, vasily smyslov vasily smyslov one of the top grand masters from the last century you see now how many problems he had because he didn't develop this dark square bishop and white will continue in the opening to really really try to lock it down so this is the main idea here by white white is a pawn down but uh, white will try to lock down here really this dark square bishop so let's see the continuation we have the queen on d4 rook on d8 and now castling by white we have bishop on e6 now takes takes uh, rook takes on d8 king takes on d8 and now knight on uh, knight on g5 with an attack on the bishop we have uh, king on uh, king on uh, c7 and now knight takes on e6 uh, f takes on e6 and now we we are again building sort of a fortress against this dark square bishop we have g6 we have now f4 uh, we have h6 king on d2 we have a bishop on g7 rook on c1 we have rook on d8 king on e3 of course we have c3 b takes c3 uh, b uh, b3 rook on b1 rook on b8 we have now bishop on uh, bishop on e4 very strong move also to, uh, with the preparation to play bishop on d3 then bishop on c4 also attacking and this g6 pawn we have g5 uh, now you see white simply creates the blockade against this potential uh, pawn moves because as i said we want to lock this bishop out the bishop can can really not participate in the game still we can continue with our light square bishop and you see how important it is to develop the bishops but it's you'll see in my next example that uh, develop uh, developing the bishop has also uh, some kind of rules because if you develop the bishop you should really do it in, so, uh, in so, uh, with some basic rules in chess so here let's see the continuation b2 was played we have king on d2 um, uh, rook on b3 uh, bishop on c2 we have rook on b6 bishop on d3 again uh, rook on b3 bishop on c2 rook on b6 but now c4 very important move c5 king on c3 of course we have a5 bishop on b3 uh, we have now uh, sort of a try of black to um, go with the, with this dark bishop into the game g takes f4 king on d7 we can take of course the pawn on b2 king and e8 rook on b1 
uh, uh, king on f7, rook on g1 was played, bishop on a checked, now bishop on c2, king on g7, bishop on g6 with the check, king on g8, and now rook on d1, and in this position, black resigned because it was really a desperate, desperate situation, we can now play really freely with this rook, we have also some dangerous threats on the on the 8th rank, we can also play something like rook on d7, attacking these weak pawns, so I said, here white simply continues the situation with one piece up because this bishop is locked out so here i wanted to show you also an instructive game uh, it was played by v william winter against jose raul capablanca jose raul capablanca the former world champion also one of the best chess players in history we'll see now the problems of this um, of this uh, bishops when you try to develop it of course here w uh, white tries uh, to develop the bishop on g5 and of course he finds the best square uh, for the bishop but uh, you see now the problems uh, capablanca played immediately the move h6 uh, we have now bishop on h4 and this is now well a uh, huge mistake here uh, by white because here uh, in the continuation uh, black tried c5 now we have knight on d5 really forcing this pinning situation but now we have a very powerful idea g5 now bishop, uh, knight takes on f6 was played uh, queen takes on f6 and now bishop on g3 and again we have the situation in which uh, well white made some mistakes and didn't uh, didn't play accurate with this bishop maybe a better idea would have been uh, to play the move bishop on e3 or bishop on d2 getting it at least to c3 uh, to have at least some kind of acti activity with the bishop here the bishop is really locked out again on g3 because uh, uh, white hasn't played carefully here now of course in the continuation bishop on g4 with the idea of course to uh, doubling up pawns here on the on, on the f file we have now h3 bishop takes on f3 queen takes on f3 queen takes on f3 g takes on f3 and okay now we have again the position in which the uh, bishop is blocked out so basically we're continuing the game with this uh, bishop that uh, we can still play with but uh, white has a paralyzed bishop and it's basically game over here so let's see now the continuation we have f6 again a uh, move that closes uh, even more this bishop on on g3 we have now king on g2 uh, a5 was played a4 here we have uh, king on f7 uh, rook on h1 king on e6 so you see we can now play really freely with our own pieces because in the continuation we can get use of this extra bishop let me say it like that uh, rook on um, uh, h4 was played now rook from uh, f to b8 was played h takes g5 x takes g g5 b3 and now c6 of course with the preparation to play the move b5 because we don't care anymore we want to open some files because we have a piece up so that's why we should really try to open somehow the files and diagonals here rook on h a2 was played b5 we have rook on a1 now of course c4 it doesn't matter we want to uh, somehow just open the position a takes b5 we have uh, c takes b3 um, c takes b3 now rook on b, uh, rook on b5 we have a rook on a4 rook takes on b3 now uh, you see desperate try here by uh, by white to bring the bishop into the game because we can now play simple rook on b5 rook on c4 was played rook on b4 rook takes on c6 but now rook takes on d4 and again we are continuing with the same idea to lock down this bishop still we can get use of this bishop because this bishop can still play very actively uh, we can use it here on b4 maybe try uh, here improve the position somehow as i said we, it's simple better uh, position here so you see after this rook on d4 uh, anthony miles even resigned the game which is unbelievable now we have a pass pawn with the support of this bishop uh, it's really really a lost position here for white white doesn't have counterplay at all and you see the problems of the bishop is really, really huge one because uh, jose raul capablanca uh, realized this idea and managed to lock this position of this the dark square bishop of whites uh, in an early stage of the game so um, i hope you realize these ideas uh, let's go back mm, re re really really important um, re important move here after 
uh, after this bishop on g5 after h6 i think uh, white has to move the bishop here on d2 and then try to place it at least on c3 at least to get some kind of activity maybe even to c1 then b3 and at least develop it to b2 but here you see the problems of the bishops after bishop on uh, h4 is uh, is really huge one uh, here c uh, c5 knight on uh, d5 but here immediately uh, g5 Jose Raul Capablanca really realized this idea and you see now the problems uh, the bishop is out of game the bishop is out of game uh, for the whole game and of course here uh, Jose Raul Capablanca had a completely winning middle game so as I said be careful with your bishops because sometimes they can get locked down they can get locked by your own pieces or by your opponent's pieces so when you play play with the bishops calculate a little bit uh, where to place it where to uh, maybe trade it off even if your opponent attacks it because uh, you see these are really really deadly positions uh, these are also positions i've showed you some examples by top grand masters which uh, even didn't even realize this idea so uh, as said be careful and uh, try try to play much more actively with with your own bishops okay uh, i hope you enjoyed this video meanwhile you can watch my um, other video for my basics in chess series with this bad bishops uh, positions in which i explain this bad bishops uh, how you should uh, make progress in your middle game when you realize that your opponent has a bad bishop situation and you can also watch my chess tactics and chess puzzle series in which i show you all of the possible tactical motifs can then, that can happen in a chess game and you can also subscribe to my channel thanks you for watching guys and chess is the best of course